Welcome to another Inside the Red Raider Special Report. I'm Jerry Johnson. I'm joined by the mighty Joe Yeager. My Joe, one of my favorite traditions on Inside the Red Raiders, Raider Power, all the iterations of it uh, since I've been here, is the critical 20 list you do every off season. It's really cool. And I like that it's not, I mean, I feel like a lot of people can put a, tw uh, a critical 20 list together and there wouldn't be like a whole lot to talk about. You always have some surprise in there. You always throw, uh, you know, a curveball in there for all of us. And I think one of the curveballs for me was how you had the quarterbacks uh, lined up. But before we get to that, will you let them know? I know you've done this before, but kind of like how you do it. Just kind of break down how you come up with the list and and why you started doing this in the first place. Yeah, um, it's um, you know why. Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, this time of year, <laughs> yeah. you're you you're, you you're yeah you're yeah. struggling. <laughs> you're trying to find stuff to write because typically there's just not a whole lot going on. Now this one has been a little bit different yeah. because all the facilities, name, image, likeness, mm -hmm. uh, and of course uh, basketball transfers. Right. That recruiting and college basketball has softened the blow a little bit. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, so, but still, uh, it's good to have 20 stories you can count on, and then maybe you string another couple out of it. So, okay. it, it's it's a good way to, to get some uh, some some content going there. Uh, and now, as far as how I do it, I mean, the first thing that you do is you put together the 20 guys. Yeah. Uh, so you go through the roster and you start crossing off guys that don't make it, and you put checks by guys that you know are definitely yeah. going to make it. Uh, and then, so maybe you've got seven, eight guys that you know for sure are going to make it. All right, so at that point, you know, those are your top seven or eight guys. Yep. Okay, so then you figure out, all right, where's the next group? You, I mean, you make a mark by like seven or eight other guys. So there's your second tier and so on until uh, you've got everything out there. you got 20 guys, you got them in more or less categories, and then you start breaking down each one of those groups uh, as to, you know, you know, where they rank, and you wind up with one through 20. Uh, so that's that's, that's kind of how I do it. I mean, I try not to make it where it's just who I think necessarily the best players are. Okay. Uh, this guy at number one is the best. The guy at 20 is the 20th best guy. Uh, it tries to be the most important players, right. you know, because, I mean, certain positions are a little bit more important yep. than others, and I think uh, we know a certain position is rather right. important. Uh, so that's going to affect things. I mean, the depth, you know, if the positions right. determine, I mean, a great depth in a particular position may lessen the importance of the starter at that position because you got fallback. Uh, yeah. If he gets hurt or something, or if you, you just need to bring another guy in, you can. If he's the only guy who you know can play at a certain position, that makes him more important. Sure. So all that stuff figures into it, and um, you know that's that's just basically kind of how I do it. And speaking on the all important position, quarterback. You, I think this is the first time I've seen it where you had three quarterbacks in the critical twenty, and I believe you had Tyler Shuck at fifteen, Donovan Smith at seven. And Baron Morton at three. Is that right? Like that, okay. Yeah. Uh, get, tell us why you had him in that order. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, I believe uh, that, that Tyler Shuck is going to be the starter and uh, in, in the, in the opener, mm -hmm. season opener. I think here you're going to go with the experience, a uh, uh, guy who's a, more of a veteran player. I mean, Donovan Smith has played a lot of ball for you, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Shuck has played not only here at Texas Tech, he's played college ball elsewhere. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I think they're going to go with the veteran guy to start the season. Uh, and I think that, you know, uh, from an NFL standpoint, there's nobody who would deny that he is right now the, the, the best NFL prospect yeah. of those three quarterbacks. Yeah. This is a guy that they've talked about being a potential first round draft pick. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, uh, he's got all sorts of talent. Uh, and, you know, you just if he lives up to it, then, you know, he's all Big 12 kind of player. Yep. Uh, so, but listen, I, I, I have my doubts. I mean, I've seen enough. Uh, and including the spring game where he yeah. makes plays that I just shake my head. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, you cannot do that. Yeah. Uh, turnovers. Yeah. You cannot. Turnovers are a killer. They are. They are. That's, I mean, a turnover is like, you know, I don't, I'm sure some statistician has figured it out before what an average turnover costs you per game. Right. It's costing you points, man. There's yeah. no, you're it's giving costs, the other it team. It's it costing, yeah. If you lose points, you're losing games. Uh, so. You know, I, that's what. That's why I've got Shuck. I just don't. I don't trust him yet. Okay. All right. Then Donovan Smith is a guy uh, I'm happy with as a starter. Yeah. Uh, I really am. I think that he is more than capable of getting the job done. Uh, you know, I think he needs the touch on some of his passes is, is something he needs to develop a little bit. Uh, he, he's got a pretty good arm now. No, he does. Uh, that's not an issue. But I think some of the short to intermediate stuff he needs to tighten that up a little bit uh, but you love his ability to run and as you mentioned in the in the piece the, the the video we did on the quarterback controversy 
or the competition or battle. whatever yeah. battle. Uh, you know, this is this is a guy who can make you some big plays as well when you need yeah. to win your big games. Yeah. So I mean, he's he's right there in the mix. I could see him taking over fairly early in the season and being the starter for the rest of the way. I think that's possible. However, uh, I've got Barron yeah. at the top, and uh, you know, I believe that it may take a while. Yeah. Uh, I believe that all three quarterbacks are going to start this year. Wow. Uh, you know, I, if I had to predict it. I would say that Shuck will start your first couple of games, maybe three, and then I think Donovan is most likely to fill in there, and I think he's going to win you some games. But I think Don Baron Morton is the guy who's going to finish the season, and he's going to be starting for you in a bowl game. Uh, and I just, I mean, looks, I, I think he's probably, when we haven't seen him in live action against real competition, you know, uh, uh, but this is a guy who's, to me, he's, he's potentially your most complete quarterback. Uh, this is the guy who's, who's got the arm, it's, it's not as good as Tyler Shucks, yeah. but it's pretty doggone good. Yeah. I mean, it's right there, you know, with Donovan and all that. Uh, he's a guy who can run. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he's, he's not uh, quite Donovan Smith as a runner, but he's at least as good as Shuck, I think, and, and maybe a little bit better as a scrambler. Uh, I think he just has sort of a knack for running the offense yeah. and moving the ball, and I think he may be overall your most accurate passer. Uh, so, and uh, he obviously he's very inexperienced, he's young, uh, but he's a quarterback's, uh, he's a coach's son, as is Tyler Shuck, of course, as well. Donovan Smith. And Donovan Smith. Uh, so, you know, we got all three of these guys, yeah. you know, are, are pretty, uh, they're going to have good quarterback IQs. Yep. Uh, but, you know, I, mm -hmm. I think that uh, Baron Morton is going to be uh, a guy who just sort of picks up on things and understands things very, very well. And I just believe that he's probably going to finish out the season. He may start the back end of the yeah. season or the last four games or so plus the bowl game. You know, that's the only thing where I, they're very similar, all three of them. Donovan Smith adds a power running element yeah. that I don't think the other two guys that's do. True. That's, true. <clears throat> that's the only real difference. I mean, Shuck has a better arm, I think, probably than uh, at least like in practice and stuff. You know, it's different when the, when the lights come on. And there's just something special about Barry Morton. Really, Donovan Smith and Baron Morton, I really like both those guys. I mean, I feel really good about them. And I, like you said, Shuck's potential, you got to give it an opportunity because he has so much potential. Yeah, right, right. Now, Tyree Wilson was top on your on your list. Why? This may be a dumb question, but why why is he, is he the number one most critical player yeah. on your cr critical twin list? Yeah, I mean, he's the guy that they don't want to lose on, on this team, yeah. period. Uh, you know, they kept him out, you know, <laughs> spring. Smart. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they – you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what you've got, but if you lost him, it would be a, a catastrophe, basically. I mean, uh, this is a guy. You, know, you talk about Tyler Shuck on offense and that NFL potential. Yeah. He's the same sort of potential on defense, in my opinion. Uh, this is a guy who, in potential, in theory, uh, could be Texas Tech's best. If we want to call him a defensive lineman, he, I struggle to call him a linebacker. Edge rusher. You, you know, say that. edge rusher's right. Yeah, you know? uh, right. And but I think if 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 you sort of Think of him, he has played defensive line. Oh, yeah. That's where he played in the past. Potentially, he could be your best since Gabe Rivera wow. on the defensive line. Now, <clears throat> he's a guy who's got to do it consistently. Uh, we, we haven't seen him put it together week after week after week after week, uh, but we have seen those flashes in Mississippi State. It was a classic example where he was simply unblockable. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in the very first game that he ever played was against Texas, oh, yeah. and he Texas. altered the game. You know, immediately they, they didn't know what to do with him. Yeah. And, uh, and Tyree didn't know what he was doing out there at that <laughs> right. point. He was yeah. completely new. They just threw him into the fire. Uh, but you can see what this guy potentially can do. He can, uh, he can be an absolute game changer. I think it's ridiculous uh, that he wasn't first team all Big 12 preseason. Uh, he will be. <laughs> when, when it's all said and done at the end of the year. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's just going to be interesting to see how they use him. We've talked about this a little bit before, mm -hmm. before you know, in terms of playing off the line, standing up, hand in the ground, traditional defensive lineman, mm -hmm. outside linebacker, what's he going to do? Uh, but he's going to be on the field as much as they can get him out there, I'll tell you that. No doubt. Now, uh, I have a surprise question for you here, so we'll see what, you know, what you come up with. Who's a guy who maybe didn't make the list that you had a hard time leaving off that you feel like could have made uh, the top 20 list? Who was just right outside making the critical uh, 20? Hmm, that, that is a very good question. Um, you know, it would have been one of the other offensive linemen, I believe, or it may have been even, you know, Taj Brooks, 
and Sir Roderick were both on the list. Yes. All right. Uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, hearing more and more about Cameron Valdez. Yeah. And uh, the change of pace, sort of a back, a uh, uh, guy who can provide some electricity yeah. uh, back there and really be a, a potential home run hitter. Uh, you know, if they do rely on three running backs uh, to a large degree, if they rotate all three of those yeah. guys in there, uh, then I could see him making some big plays for this team on offense. I liked him right from high school. Yeah. yeah. You know, I saw his, his film. I'm like, man. Hey, this has got to be one of the top running backs in the state here. Yeah. You know, <laughs> there's no doubt about it. Uh, and I don't know if there's going to be too many better than him. I mean, I, I, I stand by that. I think he's going to really, really be a player. Uh, you know, I think he's one of those guys that had to mature a yes. little bit. And, you know, being young like that, that's there's nothing unusual about that. But uh, I, I think he's probably getting it together a little bit now. And, uh, yeah, I think you can see that guy make an impact, and he could be number 21. You know, I like it. I like Valdez, too. I, I love the critical 20 list. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, it's on inside the Red Raiders. Just Google Critical 20 and have it all. I think I compiled the whole list for you. I did a story, yeah, a master list. Because, uh, you know, people, we're lazy. Let's face it. We don't want to go through all of them, you know. But uh, check out Monty Joe's uh, Critical 20. It's, it's a great way to preview the, the upcoming season, which is set to kick off September 3rd right here at Jones AT&T Stadium. So, Monty Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.